I don't know where you get your recipes from, but I'm guessing it's probably not the scientific journal Communications Engineering. Don't worry, I got you covered. Some Italian materials scientists have come up with a way to cook the perfect egg, and everybody's talking about it. So this week for the Bat Signal, I'm going to cook the perfect egg. It only takes 32 minutes, and the best part is I know how to speed up video so you don't have to sit through all 32 minutes. The recipe involves two pots of water. One on the left is boiling at 100 degrees Celsius, and the other one on the right is just at room temperature. It's at 30 degrees Celsius. So you start by putting the eggs in the boiling water, and you leave them there for two minutes. Then, after two minutes, you swap them over to the 30 degree water, and you leave them there for two minutes. Then it's rinse and repeat. I think literally rinse and repeat until the eggs have gone through each of the water baths eight times. So it's a total of 32 minutes. Why do it like this? Well, it solves the fundamental problem that different parts of the egg need to cook at different temperatures. Because of the proteins that are in the egg white, the optimal cooking temperature for that part of the egg is about 85 degrees Celsius. Not boiling, not 100 degrees Celsius, just 85 degrees Celsius. And then the yolk has different proteins in it, and it actually has an optimal cooking temperature that's much lower. It's about 20 degrees lower at 65 degrees Celsius. How do you cook different parts of the egg at different temperatures? Well, one way to do it is with this business of swapping it back and forth between two water baths. Here's how it works. This is a graph of the water temperature experienced by the eggs over time. And so you can see it starts at 100 degrees Celsius, then it goes down to 30 degrees Celsius, then up again, then down again, and up again, down again, over and over. Let's look at what happens to the temperature of my eggs, egg white, first. Here's what happens in the first two minutes. The egg white is in boiling water, so it heats up, but you know it doesn't go straight to 100 degrees Celsius. It moves up slowly towards 100 degrees Celsius, but it doesn't quite have enough time to get all the way to 100 degrees Celsius because I take it out of the boiling water and I put it into the cooler water, and then the egg temperature starts coming back down. And this oscillates for the full 32 minutes, but you can see the maximum temperature that the egg white ever hits is right in that sweet spot of around 85 degrees Celsius. So that's great. This process cooks the egg white at just the right temperature. Now let's look at the yolk. The yolk isn't heated by the water. It's heated by the egg white that's around it. So it's not experiencing fluctuations of 100 degrees and 30 degrees. It's experiencing the fluctuations that are set by the temperature of the egg white, which are much smaller in magnitude. So over time, that egg yolk oscillates around the average of the two temperatures, but its max temperature is right around 65, which, as you will remember, is the optimal cooking temperature for egg yolk. So this process gets the egg white to cook at 85 degrees Celsius and the egg yolk to cook at 65 degrees Celsius. And I can't help but notice that the physics of this whole situation are exactly the same as the physics of a bat cave. When you go into a bat cave deep underground, the temperature barely changes at all. It stays constant throughout the year. Outside the cave, the temperature gets hot in the summer and cold in the winter, but at the back of the bat cave, it stays constant. And it's the same reason. It's insulated in there, but instead of being insulated by just a couple of centimeters of egg white, it's insulated by hundreds of feet of rock. And the temperature at the back of the bat cave is the average temperature outside year round. So it's, it's exactly the same. I love that you can cook an egg with the physics of a bat cave. And speaking of eggs, let's see how it turned out. The first thing I noticed is that I could peel this egg without burning my fingers off like I normally do when I eat hard boiled eggs. And that's because in the past, I've always been boiling them at 100 degrees and I guess heating the whole egg up to 100 degrees Celsius. And no wonder it burns my fingers when I'm trying to peel it right after. But here, I'm taking that egg out of 30 degrees Celsius water, which is like, you know, room temperature. And it's been sitting there for two minutes cooling down. So it's very comfortable to peel. And I know that's not how you measure whether an egg is nicely done or not. But I like that it's easy to handle. So that's one thing in its general favor. The other thing is, it looks pretty good. I'm not an expert on eggs, but look at that. It's not very rubbery. The yolk looks great. And as for the flavor... Frankly, I thought it was awesome. Possibly the best boiled egg I've ever had in my entire life. But the problem is I'm biased because I just spent 32 minutes cooking this thing. I'm invested, so I needed a second opinion. For that, I went to my 13-year-old son. He told me he's not really a fan of eggs, and then he fed his egg to the dog. 
that took me 32 minutes, but the dog loved it. Uh, if you want more recipes, don't sign up for my newsletter. It, this is a one-off, but if you do want more science stories, you should sign up. Go to followthebatsignal.com.